Okay, this is blog 15, and uh, I was talking on the very first one about life scriptures, which was Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. But the very first two life scriptures I was given was on the day I got born again, and the guy who explained the gospel to us and told us about Jesus and what I need to do to be saved, he gave us an NIV Bible, hardcover. And then he wrote two scriptures. One of them, one of them was out of Romans 14, and the other one was out of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 8, the B section. And it says this, For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That is so, so profound. The purpose, the Apostle John, by the Spirit says, For this purpose... This is the purpose that the Son of God came to this earth, was to destroy the works of the devil. When I read that, I had to make a decision. And for 34 years since, I've still been making the same decision. I have to choose to believe this, because this is what the Word of God says. It doesn't matter what's been going on in the world for the last 34 years. It doesn't matter what's been going on in my life for the last 34 years, or the life of my friends, or my family, or my loved ones. Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. How do I know? Because it is written in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, section B. He did it. Jesus fulfilled his mission. Jesus did everything that he was sent to earth to do. He didn't fail in any area. He didn't uh, become compromised in any area. He totally fulfilled his destiny. And in Psalm 139, verse 16, it says, All my days, all your days, are written down in God's book before one of them ever came into being. So we have a destiny to fulfill. And if we have a belief system like the leaders did and the people did in the nation of Israel before they crossed the Jordan the first time that they were like grasshoppers in the sight of the giants and they were like grasshoppers in their own sight. If we have an inner image that Jesus did not destroy the works of the devil, that Jesus didn't actually really overcome all the powers of the darkness at the cross, that really Jesus hasn't got all authority and power, if we have any little seed like that in our hearts, that's a hook for the enemy to undermine our faith. We must put our trust in the word of God. Jesus, our king, didn't fail. He was totally and completely successful. So start declaring out of your mouth, according to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, don't let my mouth depart from your don't let my word depart from your mouth. Meditate on it. Don't let this word depart from your mouth this week. Meditate on it. Think about it. Let the Holy Spirit totally, completely persuade your mind and persuade your soul that Jesus totally destroyed all the works of the devil. Then he sent the Holy Spirit at Pentecost 120 people received the same devil-destroying spirit that Jesus walked in. That's the Holy Spirit. They received the same spirit, the same fire, the same anointing that Jesus had to carry on his work, to advance his kingdom. Jesus did not come to this earth to restore a religion because Adam didn't lose a religion. Adam lost dominion. Adam lost the glory. Adam lost the connection to the Father. Jesus has restored all that and he stripped and disarmed all principalities and powers according to Colossians 2.15. Everyone hasn't missed a one. From the biggest to the smallest, he has stripped them, disarmed them, humiliated them. And he says, right, you go in the Holy Spirit and you implement my victory. You put into operation what I've already done. Advance my kingdom. Because I have destroyed all the works of the devil. So you can put your name there. For this purpose, you have been put on this earth to destroy the works of the devil. 
You have been put on this earth to cast out demons, heal the sick, preach the gospel, raise the dead, and advance the kingdom of our King on this earth. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and the Lord is a warrior.